Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start recording this right now. Uh, and as Ryan said, today we're going we're here to talk about uh, digital signage and Onyx's solution that's uh, powered by Chrome uh, specifically for digital signage. So when we look at our agenda, we're going to first uh, kind of set the stage for what exactly we're talking about. Where uh, does this uh, Google powered solution play in the digital signage stack? We'll also talk about the devices themselves and uh, in content management uh, because this isn't just a hardware play. This is also the ability to manage the content. We do have a good uh, mix of both IT folks and marketing communications uh, people on the line. So <clears throat> this will get a little bit uh, uh, technical when we're talking about the devices, but it will also uh, have quite a bit of good content on managing uh, your messages and pushing those out to the displays. So I hope I keep everybody engaged as we go through here. Uh, after I set the stage uh, in those two areas, I will give a demo, both uh, on the IT side, how you manage these devices, and then on the uh, content management um, side, how you are define your messages, create your messages, push those out and manage where they go. And then we'll come back and just kind of uh, do a brief recap. So with that said, um, I, I just want to kind of set some expectations here um, of what I mean by digital signage. Now, this is using the point of purchase advertising internationals uh, consortium's definition of a network of displays that are essentially managed uh, for informing, entertaining, uh, merchandising, and advertising. Uh, usually, uh, I, I will when I'm talking about digital signage, I'm talking about a one-way interaction. You are pushing information out to your audience, be it inf informing, entertaining, or whatnot. The other um, um, very um, the other area that Chrome uh, powered solutions, Google powered solutions can play is in kiosks, which is the interactive display. So people come up and touch uh, the display. For those in retail, you can think of your endless aisle type of kiosks uh, th that you see out there. Uh, for those in the corporate world, maybe it is a, a HR employee portal or time and reporting portal, uh, but that's where somebody is actually interacting and touching that display. So we're going to focus uh, mostly on the digital signage aspect of the discussion today. Uh, but that said, keep in mind what we're talking about absolutely can play in the kiosk space as well. So, okay, so when we talk about digital signage, uh, I like to kind of set the, the stage for where we play, you know, what components and digital signage we're, we're really talking about here. Uh, if we start at the bottom left, uh, the software and the systems, those are usually your content management uh, systems that are used to push that content out, manage the content, the, the scheduling, the playlists, all of that, and the systems that are, that are tied to managing that environment. So the hardware, uh, the software, the servers, all that that goes into uh, running that platform. You also have your network infrastructure, uh, that's both the, the corporate infrastructure as well as the last mile infrastructure out to uh, the locations, the stores, the, the manufacturing plants, wherever you may have uh, these displays uh, being shown. Then you have your content players or your media devices. Those uh, grab the content and push it out to the display, the display being that LCD flat panel, your display wall, or anything else uh, like that. And then finally, uh, you need to be able to monitor and measure those uh, those devices are they are they connecting to the network? Are they showing your content? Are they active? Are they offline? Um, what what version are they running of the software? All those types of things. So if we think about that stack, and then uh, where Onyx is a solution plays, we'll overlay uh, our logos here, and you can see um, Onyx is offering the solution that is uh, the content management platform along with the systems. That platform is built on your uh, on the uh, Google Cloud Platform, the same infrastructure and network that runs Google.com, YouTube, Gmail, everything else. So infinitely scalable, highly redundant, highly available infrastructure for that. Uh, that goes along with the network infrastructure. In this case, um, you are only worrying about providing that last mile connection to uh, to the display. So again the in-store display or the uh, manufacturing site display or uh, something in the lobby where you're pushing out information. Uh, 
uh, that's that's your responsibility in the network infrastructure. Everything else is uh, is Google. The content players are actually Google Chrome devices. Uh, we are uh, using the Google Chrome OS devices, and I'll talk about the different form factors here in a moment and, and why we're choosing that. But for now, in, in what we're talking here, it is a Google Chrome OS powered device. We'll tell you what that means here in a moment. The displays, uh, Onyx has relationships and can um, pretty much work with any display. Display walls, set those up. The, the, media, de uh, um, the media device, that Chrome OS device, can work with your, your, um, your display panels, your 4K displays, uh, all the way down to a little, uh, you know, a little 22 inch, 21 inch, whatever it may be on a, on a desktop in a lobby. Uh, you have a lot of uh, options in, when you're choosing your displays. And finally, the monitoring and measuring. I'm not talking about the monitoring and measuring the effectiveness of your message here. I am just talking about the monitoring and measurement of the health of the network. Again, are the media uh, devices connected to the network and syncing properly? Is the content getting pushed out uh, via the content management platform? Uh, so that's what we're speaking of here. When we wrap this all together, again, it, it's powered by Google, both on the, on the network and the infrastructure and where all of this is running from all the way down to the, the media devices, those content players that are hooked up to your displays. So why did we pick Chrome OS for this particular solution? Um, you know, when you look in, in the marketplace today for digital signage, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's been, uh, there, there's been a lot of things happening in digital signage since the days of static displays where you'd have to go put a placard board up or, or, or you know, um, working with that. Digital signage has, has moved forward a lot, but it's still suffering from a lot of the old technologies or old uh, uh, ways of doing things. Uh, I've heard the word sneaker net used more when it comes to digital signage than I ever have heard in, all, in the past 10, 15 years. People are still walking around with thumb drives that might have a Microsoft PowerPoint and they're plugging it into a, a typically a Windows, uh, and if not a Windows XP machine, and just uh, having that run uh, on its own. That's not very scalable. It's not very secure. It's just not a very tenable solution. So um, what you find is you're getting locked into uh, uh, proprietary solutions that make it easier to manage these devices. And uh, there are very powerful offerings, uh, but again, they're proprietary. You're locked in and they're very costly because of that proprietary nature. On the flip side, uh, there's, heck, you have Raspberry Pi devices out there, $35, $40 for a device that is your media player that can hook up to any type of display out there. But, you know, that's very absolutely cost effective, but the management of it is very difficult. There, there's not uh, great central management tools. Uh, there, there's not a, a great content management platform that can interoperate with them, you're kind of stuck in between these two, uh, these two ends of the spectrum, either expensive and proprietary or cheap and limited functionality. So we chose the Chrome devices to kind of fill that gap, fit right in the middle there, where it is a very um, reliable platform. It's a very secure platform. These devices uh, um, have uh, several ways of ensuring the security of the device. Uh, it never boots up with a virus or malware or Trojans, uh, even if somebody were to hack it, next time it booted up, it would be wiped, that hack would be wiped away because uh, Chrome OS uses the concept of verified boot, meaning every time the device boots up, it checks to see uh, the boot image that, it, that it's starting up from versus a known good image. And if that boot image is uh, corrupted or bad in any way, it, it falls back to the known good image. Uh, that, <clears throat> that security is very important, uh, when, especially when you're talking kiosks. And people trying to, you know, there's people like me that will see a kiosk and look at it as an opportunity to try and break something or see if I can't uh, fiddle around with it and, and just see how tightly locked down that is. Uh, the Chrome devices also give you zero touch deployment, meaning uh, I can take a device out of a box, I can turn it on, I can enroll it in my, in, in my domain uh, or, or put it in my environment and uh, then box it back up ship it out, and based on some management stuff that I'll show you here, uh, in five minutes, that device is ready to go. I can drop ship it anywhere. A store manager could you know, unbox it, plug it into a display, and it's going without any additional involvement. 
These things are really easy to deploy and manage. Uh, I'll show you that central management tool. It's, it's the Chrome OS management console. Uh, through that management console, I'm able to define a role for each of my devices or groups of devices. And uh, that could be one group of devices could be a kiosk that's running a particular application. It boots right into that kiosk app. Uh, the other could be running a digital sign application. So it boots right into the digital sign uh, for displaying the content. Uh, I, I might have a, a third type of role where the Chrome device is your, your business center login. So you're providing business center guest login to people to come in and just browse the internet. And when they log out, everything's wiped. I have the ability to manage those roles, even move devices between those roles and automatically switch their, what their capabilities are on the fly. From the, uh, from the management side also, it, these things do automatically update. Uh, their operating systems, their patches, security updates, all that is done for you. As an administrator, you don't have Patch Tuesday for Windows devices where you have to go out and make sure they're all uh, updated and do everything you need to do that goes along with Patch Tuesday to make sure everything's been regression tested and it's not going to adversely affect your environment. Uh, this, this is pretty much a set it and forget it environment. And finally, Chrome is a cross-platform service. A lot of you, uh, I'm guessing a majority of you, uh, use the Chrome browser on your desktop, on Windows, on, on Mac, um, and even Chrome OS devices like the Chromebooks. A lot of what we do here with specific to the Chrome OS device, we could extend to Chrome uh, management on a, a Windows device or a Mac. So uh, take all that in. You have, uh, gosh, the, the, the entry level Chrome OS device is $150 with a $50 um, management fee yearly. That's a $200 device. A lot of your the media devices out there are in the you know multiple hundreds of dollars, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars. So you get a very powerful media device with centralized control that is very flexible, can do a lot of things all at the same time, and is cross-platform. So you're able to extend your message beyond just those displays. You can also reach um, Chrome browsers and integrate those into your uh, into your environment. If we look at the form factors of these Chrome devices. Uh, I believe there's about 14 manufacturers out there today that are that are um, putting out Chrome devices, and more and more are coming out each month. We have the typical uh, laptop or Chromebook form factor on the top left there, um, from Dell and HP and Toshiba and Asus and Acer. Uh, those are fantastic devices. <clears throat> on the right hand side, uh, top right is a Lenovo. Uh, similar, it's a Chromebook. It's a laptop uh, form factor. But this Lenovo is unique in that I can uh, swivel it around and kind of make it into a kiosk, uh, so a touchscreen kiosk. So the keyboard isn't exposed, but just the touchscreen is. So maybe, maybe that was, would be good for a desktop uh, kiosk that you need. On the bottom left is that Chromebox. This uh, is in, in the Asus Chromebox. It's a four inch by four inch by two inch device. It boots up in less than 10 seconds. It comes with all that security and that central management that I, I uh, talked about earlier. Um, comes with v, standard Visa mount, so you can mount it to the back of your displays. Uh, comes with Wi-Fi built into it, Bluetooth, uh, and other um, standard uh, services right out of the box. And that's what we, uh, that, that is, is what m makes up our uh, digital signage media device. And then finally, on the bottom right is the LG Chrome Base. That's an all-in-one Chromebook. So similar to your HP or your Dell all-in-one computers, uh, that monitor houses the computer and uh, is a really good kind of guest mode kiosk or um, uh, useful for applications like that. So I talked a little bit about the devices and, and why we selected uh, the Chrome, uh, Chrome OS devices as our uh, media uh, display device. We'll talk about the management side of this and, and bear with me, marketing, advertising, uh, communications types of folks. I'm going to get into that side in just a moment. Uh, I, like I said, we have a mixed environment here, so I'm trying to uh, make sure everybody gets a little bit out of this that uh, is useful to them. On the Chrome management side, I, I alluded to some of this already. It's a web-based management console. You can get to it from anywhere at any time and, and uh, configure your your devices and the policies around it. Uh, the org-based policies uh, allow me to, again, have an organization that says, 
uh, these devices in this organization are a key, uh, for kiosks. Again, kiosk being that interactive type of mode. Uh, the, the devices in this uh, second organization are my digital signage um, devices. And I have a third organization maybe that's for my, my guest user access, just kind of an open terminal. Um, you can mix and match those uh, policies across orgs as you need to. And uh, that, alluding to that last bullet point, there are actually over 150 policy items that you can use to manage these uh, Chrome devices. When we're talking about digital signage, it really is just a handful of those, probably five. Uh, but for a larger uh, concept of Chrome and Chrome OS in the organization, there's about 150, probably more around 170 of those uh, policies you can manage. As I said, these can run in kiosk mode for that interactivity. Uh, they do work with touch screens. Uh, I have a touch screen Chromebook myself. Uh, it works with touch screen monitors, so we, we can make these interactive, uh, or they can just work with your, your standard displays. Uh, public sessions is more of a kiosk. I, I've talked about that once or twice, uh, where you just want to provide a guest user access to the internet, uh, let them browse, do what they need to do. Not really a kiosk in that there's an application they're interacting with. It's more of just an open terminal they can go to. And in public session, when they log out of that guest session, uh, all of their browsing history cookies, everything's wiped so that they, uh, uh, the next person that comes on would not be able to see what the, the previous person did. So you can see here, the, these Chrome OS devices, together with the Chrome management capabilities, uh, provide a very robust platform, not only for digital signage, but kiosks and other, uh, and other um, requirements within a, an organization. So um, I'm going to actually stop right there for a moment. And Ryan, are there any questions that have come in um, since I started going here? And uh, we'll, we'll take some around the Chrome OS and the intro before I, I get into the content management. Um, Steve, I'm not I'm not seeing any uh, pressing questions right now. Um, so I think we were probably good to uh, move ahead for now. Okay, great. So now. Um, IT folks, you can kind of, I've uh, 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 gone over the IT side, now we're getting into the, uh, the marketing communications folks uh, uh, area, uh, and we're going to talk about the content management. Um, again, I said that a lot of people that we talk to uh, still manage content by just taking a thumb drive around and, and uh, pushing that out to a display. That probably works for you know, a small group of displays in one location. But once you get into a larger network of displays, you need something that allows you to um, create the content uh, and then manage which displays are showing which content at what time um, and, and be able to control that. So Onyx's solution is a full cloud-based platform. Again, it's running on Google's, uh, Google's system, the same one that runs YouTube and Google.com. So it is uh, highly available, highly redundant, um, access from anywhere at any time through a browser, all those benefits. Um, that, that gives you uh, a, the ability to manage this from anywhere. Okay. Uh, it also offers a multi-platform player, meaning uh, the, we load up the player on the Chrome OS device to display the contents. I'm gonna show you that in a, in a little bit here. Um, but there are also uh, players for Macintosh, uh, for OS X, and Windows devices. What that allows you to do is create a, a plan for moving forward um, using the, the Chrome-based platform as your display device. But maybe you have some old Windows devices you can't get to right away. You can load up the media player on those Windows devices and then manage your content across both your old Windows platform and your new Chrome-based platform, all from within the same interface. So I can run the same display, uh, uh, <clears throat> the same display software on Windows, on Mac, and then on the Chrome devices I, I just went over. So we can we can take care of your entire environment and give you that path forward to uh, replace those old systems in the time that makes sense to you. Okay. Uh, this is an open source, open-based. Uh, platform, which means there are already plenty of content connectors out there for RSS feeds and, and uh, Twitter feeds and, and 
stock tickers and, and weather and recent news from Reuters. You know, those are all out there and available for you already. Uh, but because of the nature of this being an open platform, you're able to uh, either Onyx or if you have staff that's, uh, that has the ability, you can build your own content connectors. So maybe you need to reach back into a um, Tableau environment to display statistics or metrics on a, uh, a network operation center screen, or you want to reach back into um, uh, some ERP platform and, and display those metrics. You're able to, to write those uh, yourself or again through Onyx and, and present that custom content on your screens as well. There is concept of role-based privileges and workflow, so I can have a user defined as a, uh, an editor, and as an editor, they're able to create or, or update a presentation, but they're not able to publish it. That publishing capability is left to an editor who can come in and see if there are, uh, see which presentations have been revised. They can go and, and uh, look, uh, check them off, make sure that everything looks good, and then the, uh, then the editor is able to publish those. Uh, we also have the ability to break out your organization. So if you have a parent organization and you maybe you have three different brands and each of those brands are responsible for their own content, they can be sub organizations and they have access to their own content, but they have no ability to look across at the other brands content and manage that. So I, I have that that siloed the ability to silo if I wanted to uh, my different brands or concepts uh, so that they're able to manage their own uh, stuff without affecting anybody else. As expect, this does give you the ability to uh, develop and create your, your presentations or the, the, the content and the displays, the images that you're gonna put out there. Uh, but if you already use a uh, something like Adobe Illustrator or something else to create your content and you, we can make that available via HTML, so a URL, uh, we can also uh, ingest that HTML content into the content management platform and manage which displays it's shown on for when or when and for how long, so on and so forth. And it does give you full playlist capability so I can define playlists that will be played on, on specific displays uh, during which, which days, which time of day, uh, and I'll show you all the granularity that we can get in uh, to that. Okay. So, um, I, I'm, that's the content management piece. Uh, what I'm going to do is jump into a demo, quick demonstration of the, the uh, Chrome OS control panel and show you all how you, you manage these displays, how simple it really is. And then I'm going to get into the content management side and show you uh, some designs and uh, um, how we manage those organizations and push the, uh, the, out, the, the schedules or the playlists out. So before I... Um, before I move on to that, Ryan, uh, instead of taking questions at the end, sometimes they're just good break points. Uh, I'll go ahead and ask, uh, do we have any questions right now? Steve, I think we're uh, good to go moving forward on the, um, on the demo. Um, okay, I do see one or, or two questions that come in, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, let me read over this. So, um, the question that came in was about uh, compatibility with touchscreens. I'll go ahead and read this. I'm doing this off the cuff, so, so give me a moment. Uh, compatibility with touchscreen controllers seems to be a sticky point when attempting to use standard kiosk touchscreens. What type of compatibility exists with the use of Chromebox and industry-grade kiosk touchscreens? Are the necessary drivers that are available? What about other kiosk components, uh, receipt printers, et cetera? That's a fantastic question. Um, the, the Chrome OS devices, uh, it, in the heart of them are Linux based. Uh, so it uses those types of drivers to interact with, uh, with those touch screens. Um, I, I haven't run into any issues myself. I'm sure there, you know, in the wild, there are combinations that don't work, um, but that's something that we could definitely, uh, you know, we, we've got some that work. And uh, if, there, if you already have existing platforms that you're trying to uh, fit this into, we could definitely work through that with y'all. Uh, as far as the other components, yeah, you know, there, there's, if I think of an endless aisle example, you're going to want a card reader, um, the, the receipt printer, things like that. Uh, these do work with uh, USB devices and Bluetooth devices. So most standard USB and Bluetooth type of uh, um, uh, accessories will work. Uh, the receipt printer is uh, different. It doesn't 
have a receipt printer capability. There, there's some, some specific uh, things with that. Uh, that said, um, this being a cloud-based platform, uh, a lot of your users that uh, would use this functionality are uh, very open to receiving email receipts. Uh, so while that's not the entire answer, that, that is uh, one way uh, to look at that. Okay, sure. Um, so uh, one, I'll take one more question and then I'll move on to the demos. The, the question is, what's the minimum investment uh, cost-wise into hardware? Uh, I, I, I think, are you asking, is there like a minimum spend for the solution? Or is, what's, you know, just what does the cost of the hardware cost? Uh, I'll answer uh, for the media players, okay. Uh, again, the Chrome OS devices that we're using, the Chrome boxes, uh, the, base, uh, the basic level, which handles uh, all HD content um, uh, for displays is uh, $150, $160 US. And then there's a $50 uh, annual management fee that's added on top of that from Google. Uh, if you need to drive a 4K display or a display wall, uh, then we're looking at about $375 for the media device. Okay. All right, good questions. Um, I'll, if there were some others that I uh, um, missed, I will come back at the end. But let's go ahead now and jump into the, uh, the demo of my control panel. So uh, let's go. I'm going to slide this over. And Ryan, if you can confirm that uh, you are seeing my control panel now. Yes, sure can. Yes, that's good. Great. Okay. Um, so this is the the admin console for my Google Chrome management. If there's any Google Apps customers out there, it's actually the Google Apps control panel, and the device management is just an add-on to it. Okay. So I'm uh, going to go to my devices, and first up, whoops, I've been logged out for long enough. I do not look like Tony Danza, for uh, those that might have seen that. Um, that was somebody's joke on me a while ago. Uh, so I, I'm going into my device manager. And first off, I just want to show you, I do have, uh, the. I can see uh, my devices out there. I can uh, um, find out information about them. So uh, on the left-hand side is my organizations. This is one of my demo environments. Uh, there's a lot of orgs. I'm just going to go to the Steve org. And I'll look at the Chrome OS uh, organization. And I can see I've got four devices provisioned in this organization. I can see when their last sync was. So some of these devices just uh, recently synced. This uh, one on the 17th. Others are older. Again, this is my testing environment. I have a slew of devices that I'm playing with all the time. Um, so I can go ahead and we see I've got my location and then some notes. I'm able to edit this information. And um, I can go look at my hardware. Uh, and my notes. So here's where I can edit my notes and say, you know, who's the user, some notes, maybe where it's at, uh, that type of stuff. So that, that's very handy, being able to, at a glance, uh, see, you know, which devices are, are uh, synced, uh, where they may be, uh, and being able to tell maybe by org unit what their purpose is. Now, this there's a really great um, Google spreadsheet, again, for you apps users, there's a great Google uh, spreadsheet app that will actually allow you to bulk manage all of this. So I can uh, pull a report from this management console and from a spreadsheet, make updates, push those updates back in here and manage it that way. So it's a very, uh, very easy uh, um, uh, ability to bulk manage these devices as well. Uh, and then we, if we go to my digital signage again, we see some others. Uh, I've got some out in Wisconsin that are being tested. Uh, so I have this visibility into what's going on with my devices. I, I can, uh, maybe in my notes tag, I can put asset tag information if we were asset tagging these devices or, or whatever is meaningful to you to keep track of them. So that's, uh, that's just from the device perspective, um, what's going on there. If I go back to the device management and look at the actual settings, here's where we get into the managing uh, of these devices and, and essentially turning them in from a Chrome, uh, just kind of a plain out of the box Chrome device to a media device. Okay. Uh, again, I have my, my organization on the left-hand side, and I've got my digital signage work here. If you remember, I said there's roughly 150, 170 uh, policies that you can manage on a Chrome device. But when we're dealing with the digital displays in our solution, it's only roughly five settings. So I'm going to, uh, in this digital signage, I'm going to actually scroll down to my kiosk settings. And here is uh, where... I configure this. So I'm going to set this to allow a single app kiosk. Because in reality, 
this digital signage solution is just a kiosk app, uh, but it's just uh, it's not an interactive kiosk. It's just a one way. So I'm telling it to allow a single app kiosk. As the administrator, I go and for this organization. Remember, I'm working in the uh, in the digital signage organization, so this can be different for uh, for the say the Chrome OS organization. But I'm going into the manage the kiosk app, and I'm installing this Rise Vision uh, player. That is the the media devices uh, display application. Um, so I can install multiple, I can install different apps, uh, multiple ones. But after I've set them all up, I define for this org which app this my devices in this organization are going to start when they boot up. That's all I have to do. On the device itself, I don't have to install that application. Um, as a user, I don't have to do anything. When this device boots up, it's going to receive this policy and that application for displaying my content will be pushed out to it automatically. And then it will automatically go right into um, displaying my content. This is fantastic for deployments because uh, I can centralize the provisioning of these things uh, in one location. And then I can just ship them out. And again, any store manager, any floor manager, or whomever else uh, might be there can just unbox it, plug it in, and that thing is ready to go without any additional interaction. Uh, for the IT folks out there, I do have the ability to. Um, Remember, I, I said these things will auto update, so you don't have to go and do Patch Tuesdays and OS updates. Uh, well, if I have a network of a thousand devices out there, I don't want them all updating on the same date when the new Chrome OS release comes out, which is about every six weeks. I don't want all a thousand devices downloading 50 meg of uh, updates. So I can actually uh, set my network up to scatter the updates, uh, uh, scatter them across the, up to 14 days, so there's less impact across my network. I also have the ability to um, Restrict the Chrome version. So if our media player that's running on these, we know it works with Chrome version 39. Chrome version 40 comes out, uh, say, the middle of next year, and there's a, a, a bug that our player isn't able to play on uh, Chrome version 40. Well, we can lock this down to Chrome version 39, so we know our media devices will always be running this, the version of the operating system that is known to work with our uh, media player. Um, and until we get it fixed and then can upgrade it. So I have that ability to can control what's going on. So I know I'm not going to have any, these little, you know, gotcha moments of uh, a new operating system version coming out and messing up uh, potentially my huge display network that is pushing advertising and generating revenue for me. Okay. So that's all I really wanted to show within um, the Chrome management. Uh, just really, hopefully, uh, um, illustrating how simple this is, yet very powerful. I didn't get into all the other policies that you're able to manage uh, as an IT person uh, for Chrome acting in any other uh, type of uh, um, role, be it a, a standalone kiosk, a guest kiosk, or even virtual desktops. Uh, I just wanted to focus on how this looks for the digital signage. If you'd like to see more about Chrome OS management in general for those other roles, I'd be more than happy to uh, get, get uh, with you individually and show that. So, so far uh, we've shown we, we've kind of talked about where uh, the Onyx uh, Onyx solution plays in the the digital signage stack. Talked about the features and the benefits of the Chrome OS uh, devices and, and for digital signage. Uh, we we briefly discussed the content management and then I showed you this uh, the Chrome management console. Now I'm going to uh, switch over to my content management platform and show you uh, what this looks like. So again, this is all web-based. And actually, before I do that, let's uh, go ahead and, and stop um, and see if we have any questions. Um, so I have a question asking, is it possible to display the content as web content rather than a device? Um, so I'll take a stab at that. I don't quite understand uh, uh, what you're driving at there. These devices um, are... Chrome OS is a web-based operating system. Uh, I showed you how to configure our uh, uh, media player in there by pushing out that Rise Vision player. Uh, so that will show the content from this content management platform that I'm in right now. But if you wanted to, uh, I, I don't even have to install that media player. I can just set up a policy in Chrome to uh, boot up and show a URL or an IP address from a browser in a full screen mode. Uh, so you could do it uh, that way. Um, and, the, and because these are 
um, make the way, yeah, so you can, uh, hopefully the way I'm describing this now is, is helpful. Um, so instead of booting into the Rise Vision player and, and sh sh that media showing the content in the, from the content console or the management console I'm showing you here, uh, it can just boot into a URL and uh, um, start up with that URL. And the fact that this is uh, in your network, it could be a URL behind a firewall and it'll, it'll still be reachable because this uh, device is plugged into your local network. I hope that uh, answered your question, Martin. If not, uh, we can talk later, okay? All right, so here is the, um, the content management platform. Again, uh, it is open source. Uh, it is uh, running on Google's cloud platform, infinitely scalable, reliable, available uh, from anywhere on a browser. Uh, I'm going to go through a few things here before we get into the actual presentations and just give you an idea uh, of, of the management side of this. So I have, uh, I am in my Onyx Dev 1. Uh, environment. This is my test environment again, uh, but I do have the ability to switch. So I have that concept of, I remember I said, if I had different concepts or brands that I wanted to silo off, so they were able to manage their own content uh, without affecting anybody else's, uh, I can do that. So I just clicked on the switch uh, link at the top, and I have the ability to switch uh, between any of these uh, different networks, if you will. And then uh, when I do that, uh, I'm managing displays for that network. I'm managing content for that network and it's not going to be affecting anything else. So that's uh, that's that siloing of, of data. And I hate using the term silo, but it is kind of appropriate for this. Um, then I have my users. And if we look at uh, Doug here, we'll see Doug is actually an editor, a publisher. He's a super admin, if you will. He can do pretty much anything that, well, he can do anything and everything that needs to be done uh, within this environment. Now, Doug is within my Onyx Dev 1. Uh, he's a user here in the Onyx Dev 1 environment. So he has the ability to switch to those to these uh, silos. If I had created Doug under Giant Eagle, he would not be able to jump up to Onyx Dev 1 or across. So users are also not only content, but users are, are um, kind of cordoned off there, if you will. Uh, now, that was uh, Doug, who was a super admin. If I look at DS, uh, DS is only an editor. So DS can go and manage presentations, uh, you know, edit presentations, create them. DS just cannot push them out. And what that looks like is if I go to my presentation side here, we'll see a bunch. And let me uh, let me expand that a little bit so that it's a little easier to see. Um, we'll see in this state column on my all of my active presentations, some have been revised or they are in revised state. That means somebody, an editor, has edited them but did not publish them. So uh, some, uh, we can go in and uh, publish that as an editor. So if I go to this Birch restaurant, I have the ability as the uh, as an uh, editor to go ahead and publish that and make that effective across my network. Then, okay. So we we talked a little bit about the network or that that siloing of, of locations so that one concept can only edit their their content and not affect other concepts or brands. Uh, we showed the users and that that idea of um, different levels of, of access to the environment. And now let's uh, look at these displays. So the displays are the actual media devices. Um, when we set these up, each display is registered as its own display, so we're able to uh, um, identify those. And I actually I need to start my demo display up. And we have information about uh, the displays on here, so I can see if they're offline, I can see Rodney was playing around and hasn't installed it yet. He's just set, set it up. So between my control panel, where I'm able to see my devices uh, when they last synced, that's the operating system. That's the lower la layer stuff. And uh, the display management in our content management platform, we can get a good idea of which displays are healthy and which uh, are having issues. And right now, all of, all of these are offline. I need to actually start my... Um, active display here in just a few minutes. And if I look at, uh, let's go ahead to my the MacBook demo one. I, I'm running the player on my MacBook. Uh, so I can see, uh, I can give it a name. I can, uh, it, it automatically picks up the resolution. Uh, this display is actually set to use the same um, physical address as what my, my corporate identity has been set up as. So I'm in Lakewood, Ohio. 
Um, my display is set to use the company address. So if I'm pushing out weather um, or local time or things like that, it will use that information from the, uh, the, the, the corporate hierarchy to determine uh, what it needs to pull in. Um, I can reboot these devices. I can reboot the actual computer. Uh, I have some control around this. I can, uh, I can upgrade or auto upgrade the media player itself. So the operating system, Chrome OS, is auto updating regularly, not requiring anybody to go touch it. Uh, we can also do the same with the, the um, media player that's running on top of that. So that's my displays. Now, um, we look at the presentations, these are, this is the content that I'm creating and uh, uh, managing. I'm going to put a little disclaimer here. I am a systems engineer. I am by no means a marketing or communications person with any type of artistic talent. So when we look at some of these demonstrations, please, uh, uh, please bear that in mind and don't judge me based on that. Um, so I'm going to start off with, let's, let's look at this uh, pharmacy one and I'm going to just minimize that a little bit so we can see a little more. And what we need to get uh, in our mind is this concept of um, the layers here. So the main presentation is is my kind of canvas. Okay, that that canvas uh, has these containers. So I'm going to scroll down and I've got this container here. And if I right click on this container and choose properties, we can see this container has three elements in it. So I can have this uh, A container contain multiple elements, and it can be different types of elements. And if I edit, uh, say, the prevention element, we can see that that element is going to uh, rotate for 10 seconds. So it'll be displayed for 10 seconds. And I have control over um, the timeline and where this element is being shown. So I can say, uh, if I click on the timeline, I can say, you know what, this is not going to be shown all day. This particular element, the prevention image, is only going to be shown between 8 and, uh, say, 4 in the afternoon. And I can make this a daily, weekly, reoccurring, uh, or, or whatever. And I can actually get down to even the particular dates. So uh, maybe I'm running a, a, an advertisement for the weekend. I want that image to just push, be pushed out for that weekend. I can say, only display this image uh, between these particular dates. So at the element level, the element level is that lowest uh, level. I have full control over when, how long, and even where. I can go in and say, I only want that particular image to be shown on you know, um, store one, five, and eight, and then I can have a different image showing on two, three, six, and seven. So at the element level, I have full control over where, when, and how long it's displayed. And you see that I have that across all of my elements. And I can add additional elements. And if we do, we see the different types of elements I can do. Content and uh, text content are gadgets that you can create. Uh, text is just textual based stuff. Um, a presentation, so I can actually set up a, an, an Excel PowerPoint presentation and pull that into this, or a Google presentation. Images, videos, I can pull the videos um, from YouTube, I can upload them, or I can do HTML. And then the HTML, uh, I'll actually show that one in a little bit. Right? Uh, so that's at the element level. Now, these are the elements that make up this uh, container. If I look at the actual container, I also have the uh, controls over when, where, and for how long that's displayed. So if you remember, this container is this box down here. So I can not only des decide how long, when, and for how, uh, where, and, and whatnot, uh, this is displayed, but I can also get into each piece that makes up that container or each element. Uh, so I have full control over that. There's very powerful controls being able to do that. Okay. Um, so that gives you an idea. Each of these containers can have their own um, individual elements with their own timelines and, uh, and, and which displays they go to. Uh, so I'm able to manage that. And if I do a preview, uh, I can go ahead and just click on a preview and this will show me what this is gonna look like on my displays. I'll let this rotate. You see I'm pulling in a Twitter feed. I told it to pull up the Twitter feed for uh, um, at FluGov, and that will uh, go ahead and um, scroll through as I get that. And the bottom, those elements are showing up every 10 seconds. And what's kind of cool is if I'm an editor working on this and I want to share this with somebody else, I can just click on the share button and, and email them essentially this link. And they'll be able to take a look at it and say, yeah, that looks cool um, or not. Okay. 
So that is a presentation. And remember, the presentation on my canvas uh, contains these, uh, has these containers, and each container can have multiple elements. And across all of that, I'm able to define who or where, when, for how long these things are being displayed. If I go back to my presentations, you'll notice I have uh, two pharmacy ones. And I'm going to tie that together here um, and by going to my schedules. Schedules are your playlists. And I've got this pharmacy demo playlist. And I've created the playlist and I've, I've said in that playlist, uh, play those two uh, presentations that you saw in my presentation section. I can, I can uh, change their priority or their, where they are in, in the playlist. I also, again, have that full timeline capability of managing this playlist, where, when, how long it's been played, and which displays this playlist is going to play on. And I can also preview this playlist. So I'll click on preview on the playlist, and this will play through uh, the entire playlist. I'll let this uh, go ahead and uh, scroll through. I can't remember if I set this for just a few seconds or if I'll um, let it go here. Let me hide this. Uh, and again, you'll notice, uh, just like with the playlist, I have the ability to share or email um, this playlist so somebody can take a look at what it's going to be like in production before I uh, may publish it or, or put it out there. Right? Uh, so in just a moment, this will rotate through. I think I've got one last rotation here. Uh, there we go. Um, this is a really simple one, just showing some images, and that's actually a video um, just looping there on the bottom right side. So that's a, a playlist. That playlist uh, or schedule is just made up of multiple presentations, which I am able to determine uh, when, where, and for how long they're being displayed. Um, so that's uh, really it from the content management side. If I go back here, uh, we'll just kind of recap. I have the ability to organize my, uh, my, my business to match uh, how it, it is in an org chart level. Uh, so I can have um, uh, brand A, brand B, and brand C have their own environments uh, without any cross-contamination and manage those. Uh, I have the ability to uh, manage my displays, see, some, see the health of those displays, are they active, even update them centrally, uh, remote boot the devices if I need to, all of that. I have the concept of my users and different levels of users, so I can have an editor, and a publisher and a super admin, and they all have different roles to play in this. And finally, I have my presentations, which are which is the content that I create within those uh, presentations. I have containers, and containers have elements. And across the entire, um, across all of those, I have the ability to control where they're presented, for how long are they going to be presented, uh, which displays. I guess that would be where, uh, uh, when. All I have full control over all of that. And then finally, those presentations are put into schedules or playlists that let me decide, uh, mix and match my messaging, and again, even control uh, where, when, for how long those are done and to which displays. So before I go back to the recap, uh, I'll stop. And Ryan, are there any questions that have come in since uh, the last batch? Uh, you know, Steve, I, I don't think I've been able to view uh, any of these questions. I don't have any in my chat window, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, people haven't asked some new okay. ones. Okay. All right. Um, so, I, okay, uh, I, I do see one. I'll go ahead and grab this one. I think I missed it earlier. Uh, the question was, is there a way to pass authentication to access content to be displayed? Um, so the uh, passing the authentication, so uh, um, displaying content that is protected um, by a username and password before it's shown on the display. Um, that's, that would probably have to be done through a more of a kiosk type of application with a little user interaction to set it up. Um, with app dev, and, and I, I failed to mention with, uh, uh, with this, um, there, uh, well, I guess I did mention a little bit. This is an open platform uh, with APIs. So with those APIs, uh, we could probably build some type of, of authentication mechanism in there uh, at the device level. That's something I, I would have to get, talk with the developers and figure out a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, uh, and then, uh, the next question came in was, how does uh, Rise Vision Chromebox drive multiple displays as one single screen? So if you, let me bring up my Rise Vision um, here, and I'm gonna go into my presentation. 
And um, right now, so let's uh, go ahead and pull this up. If you notice, this uh, presentation is set up for 1280 by 768 resolution. When I'm configuring my presentation, I can go ahead and set up uh, this to whatever I need. So if we're doing 4K uh, video 4096 by, uh, I forget what, uh, what the, the full resolutions are, I could define that as a custom resolution. And uh, if, I was, if I were to use, say, four displays to build that, right now, Rise Vision does not support multiple, uh, driving multiple monitors individually. Um, what we end up doing is uh, using any, any of the displays that kind of so support display matrix where they all kind of uh, daisy chain into each other and you can make a, a display wall that way. Um, in, the, in the near future, the, that player should be uh, driving multiple monitors from one and uh, being able to, to individually drive a window, if you will. Uh, in the meantime, you would just set up different content areas for uh, either one big presentation that's spanning across those, in my example, four displays, or you could uh, just break that wall up into four content areas and, and have it go that way. Uh, last question here, is there an alert mechanism to notify support of offline uh, screens? Not right now, that is something that we're actively working on so that uh, we'll be able to provide that alerting mechanism. Again, that's the power of that open platform that allows us to be able to write these, uh, uh, these pieces. Good questions, everybody, thank you very much. Um, one other thing I did wanna show before I jumped in here, I'm, I'm glad I stopped for questions. Um, I had mentioned the uh, pulling in your own HTML uh, from, uh, say you're using Illustrator or something else to create your design, your content. Um, I have this HTML content uh, presentation here. And uh, what this is doing is I used Google's, um, it's their new uh, design tool. I can't even remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, but I developed that in HTML. It uses CSS and all that. It's, it's Google Designer, I think it's called. Um, but I created th this in, uh, in that Google Designer. It could have just as easily been Illustrator, Photoshop, something else, whatever you may use to, to create your content. Uh, and I've spanned, I've, I've, for the presentation, it's just one big con custom URL container. So if I look at this property, it's just pulling this URL. And if I go look at that, what that URL is actually um, web content hosted on a web server somewhere else. So now I could edit that HTML content. And um, as long as this URL doesn't change, I can edit that HTML content and that will be visible um, th visible when the updates come through. So this is me pulling HTML content from a different server instead of the content management platform. I'm just using the content management platform to essentially uh, create the presentation and then build that presentation into a timeline or, or, uh, or playlist. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. I see one question. Let me go. Um, let me go ahead and, and just get to the summary here, and uh, then we'll. Uh, I'll wrap up with the last few outstanding questions. So when we just uh, kind of recap, you know. Uh, this is an ultra secure platform. The Chrome operating system itself is, is highly secure. I just brought up one uh, instance of how it's secure with that verified boot. Remember when it's booting up, it, it looks at the, the, the software that's booting against a known good copy. And if there's any divergence, uh, it, will, it will boot up from the known good copy. Um, there are many other uh, aspects of Chrome that make it a, a highly secure platform for doing this. Infinitely scalable. This is all running on Google's, uh, Google's architecture and infrastructure. Uh, again, I keep saying it, the same architecture and infrastructure that runs YouTube, Google.com, Gmail, and every other Google property out there. You saw the central management. I'm able to manage all my devices from one location and one web console. So IT can manage the devices and do what they need to do. And then uh, on the content side, I'm centrally managing that content as well. It's cross-platform, meaning I can push that player that displays the content out to a Windows machine, um, maybe a Mac machine. I don't think I've ever seen a Mac drive a display. I suppose it's possible. Uh, and, and my Chrome OS devices. And that gives me a good uh, a path to uh, completely replacing my entire network uh, display network with the Chrome OS devices, which are very cost effective. Uh, you saw the granular management being able to, uh, on the content management side, at the element level, all the way up to the presentation level, define where when, for how long, uh, as well as on the 
Chrome OS management side, being able to manage based on orgs, uh, organization units, and change roles based on that. Standards-based and open platform, meaning um, we have development capabilities to, if, if there's a data source that we don't have uh, available right now, we can absolutely write um, connectors that will support those. Uh, or you can actually write it. It's a very, um, the, the platform is um, very active. There are a lot of users in the community uh, building it out. It's a fantastic environment. So with that said, um, I think I've got just uh, one or two more questions here. Uh, asking, does Onyx ship turnkey Chromebox devices? Yeah, so Onyx, um, that's a great prompt for me. Thanks, Sanjeev. Um, Onyx's solution is uh, really tiered. We have kind of a basic um, package, which will provide the devices and the management consoles and the content management console. Um, we'll, we'll enroll the devices for you and we'll ship them out, but that's about it. You, you then manage everything else on top, you know, beyond that. That's kind of the base level. You really just want to purchase the, the, the devices, the licenses, and get the environment stood up. Uh, the next level up, so that was our silver level. Our gold level is where we um, enroll the devices, asset tag the devices, set up the, the, um, the media player, uh, test the media player out, make sure everything's working, box them back up, ship them out to the location uh, where, uh, again, somebody on site can just unbox it and plug it in and it's ready to go. Uh, we do have a managed service then, uh, which is our, our platinum, where we do everything essentially uh, turnkey. We enroll the devices uh, and get everything set up, sh uh, ship them out to our field staff that will install it locally. Um, we can even, that, um, that, that's our packages. On top of that, we do have the ability to build a, a kiosk form factor. So if you don't want just a, a screen showing up, you want a nice kiosk, like maybe an airline uh, looking kiosk or, you know, tickets at a theater kind of kiosk. We do have the ability to design those types of kiosks. Uh, we do have the ability to go out and install entire display walls, um, essentially do it uh, from soup to nuts, managing the entire process and, and making sure you guys are taken care of. Um, let's see. One last question. So yeah, we only do the Chrome boxes. The question was, do you uh, do Chrome boxes only, or do we do small, smaller form factors like the Raspberry Pi uh, platforms? We, you know, this is a Chrome. It's a Google powered platform, uh, so we are only doing this with the Chrome OS devices. Uh, again, um, you get the management console that gives you all that control around managing the roles, what they do, pushing out the application automatically. Uh, for H, you know, to be able to push HD content, you're looking at 150. 200 bucks total, 150 bucks roughly for the device, 50 bucks for the management console. Um, if you need to push 4K devices, then you're looking at more around the 400, uh, four, let's say 450 um, for the device that can drive that 4K type of content in the management console. So very cost effective. Um, in fact, we feel very, very competitive, if not uh, ultra competitive. So uh, with that said, I think, um, uh, I think I've got everything. If we didn't hit your questions, I apologize. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and with that, Ryan, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, really appreciate that. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, as Steve mentioned, if you do have questions we weren't able to get to, um, you can go ahead and forward those to me at my email address. That's uh, ryan at onyxnet.com, R-Y-A-N at O-N-I-X-N-E-T dot com. Uh, we will also be circling back with everybody who attended just to get some feedback and uh, see if it makes sense to take a deeper dive on uh, your particular use cases. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll uh, thank you again for joining us and wish everyone a, a happy and safe holidays. Um, and that will conclude our presentation today. Also, as Steve mentioned, um, you know this, this was recorded, so if you would like that recording, please don't hesitate to reach out as well. Thanks, Thanks again, everybody, and take care. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.